video is preparing now. So uh, last course, everyone, uh, you're all welcome to this uh, discussion series two of World Neva Organization UK chapter today. Uh, we have guests from uh, all over the world, from many different countries, America, Canada, um, uh, Netherlands, Estonia, and uh, there's a long list, Ireland, UK, and uh, also many friends from Nepal. Uh, we have our chief uh, guest, we are our main speaker today, uh, who is uh, Dr. Jared Toffin from uh, France. And he's a well-known figure for most of us who are interested and uh, students of uh, the Neva culture and society. We've been reading his uh, um, hundreds of papers and many, many books and research work all these years. He has already uh, spent, dedicated, let's say, uh, more than 50 years, uh, half a century, uh, his dedicated, devoted uh, to the study of Newa culture and society, the study of uh, Nepalese culture and society, which is a big thing in itself, uh, which is really, really, uh, you know, highly appreciated. And we have this, uh, uh, we are very fortunate to have him here today and uh, we'll be listening to him mostly today and also have commentators, uh, comments from uh, some of our uh, select guests here who are also studying and written, uh, you know, uh, many, uh, who have also published uh, on the same and uh, similar topics. So to start with today's topic, uh, we, we are going to discuss it, is about the Japus, the position and the role of the Japu in our society and culture. This is what we are going to discuss today. And uh, I, I'm sure most of you know Japu or Japo. Is, is Japo is a variant of Japu. Uh, it, I mean, most of the classical Nepal Baza students are aware of this. And uh, Japo is laborer or even Jami, in, uh, which is also a borrowed word in uh, Kasbas and Nepali these days. Japo me, agricultural laborer. Japo, a laborer. And Japu is, again, a farmer, to be very specific. The earliest find, uh, found, you know, one of the earliest uh, known uh, mention of the word Japu is in. Uh, a manuscript from Nepal summer 1792, which would really mean like uh, 350 years, nearly 349, 50 years ago. Um, so uh, where it is mentioned like something like there's a uh, line in the scripture. So Nepal summer 792 is the earliest, one of the earliest found uh, manuscript where the word Jap is mentioned. The word itself uh, is, a, is a very um, uh, classical Nepal was a, a verb where japae means to perform work, japae yae is to cultivate a field, japae ka or japae ke is to make to work, any, you know, make anyone to work, or japae po is the one who assigns the work, and japu is the one who does the work of agriculture as, as a farmer. And it all, it all, it is such a rich, uh, uh, you know, branch in itself. It is uh, uh, the uh, Kasbas and Nepali has also word, uh, borrowed many other words related to Japu, like Jala, Jami, and everything uh, derived from Jia. And there's a lot to be studied here. For example, the most uh, popular, uh, you know, the uh, baskets carried with uh, with a pole, uh, uh, which is called Kamu in Nepal Basa and even Karpan in Kasbas and Nepali. There are various types of Kamu, Do Kamu, Bara Kamu, Cho Kamu, Ga Kamu, Cha Kamu, and we, we haven't probably seen many of them. There is a lot to be studied. There's a lot about fertilizers. For example, when there were no, like, you know, um, these chemical fertilizers, the farmers in Kathmandu Valley have been using a lot of different sa, which we call as fertilizers, like gosa, uh, khaki sa, go, no sa, and all. They also have various ways of uh, doing their farming, uh, like dai pule yagu, wapi jia, wale, walakwayagu, tukayagu, samajia, you name it, sinajia, koki dagu, tukajia, and all. There's, there's, there's a lot of things that needs to be studied. Has, there's, a, there's very less that has been published and researched about their working pattern and their history of the, the whole community itself, apart from what they exactly do. But here today, we are discussing and we are mostly learning from uh, Dr. Gerard Troffin from France. Uh, I think uh, I should better pronounce Gerard Tuffin. That's how it should, it should be pronounced, I guess, Gerard Tufa, and uh, in French, um, the position and the role of the Japu in Newa society and culture. I would request now Dr. Tufa to uh, enlighten us with his presentation today. 
Uh, OK, thank you. Namaste, Jojo Lapar. Bonjour, bonjour, is it in French to everybody? Um, well, English is not my maternal language, so please uh, forgive my, my mistakes in using this uh, language. Um, before comments and uh, queries from the different uh, audience, uh, my talk will, as you say, uh, will focus mainly today on Japu community, one of the largest and the strongest group within the Newar ethnic community. And uh, as you know, as you said, the Japu were formerly the main farmers, agriculturists, especially rice cultivators uh, in the Katmandu Valley. And the Ku, the Hu, was uh, a symbol of Japu identity as much as the Jime, Jime drum, actually. Uh, in fact, actually, today they are less and less farming, uh, we, we, less and less farming fields, and they're becoming increasingly white collar workers. We will speak about these changes, I guess, in, in the comments or in the, in the queries. So uh, briefly, I, I will start to, to present briefly my two main works, field works, that I undertook uh, among this group. Uh, first in Piangaon, on the first hand, a village in the south uh, Lalitpur Jila. And uh, on the other hand, uh, other hand, the Japus of the old Katmandu city, the Batistol, the 32 Japu, Japu tolls uh, in which they are divided. So I conducted these uh, two researches long ago, actually, uh, in the early 70s for uh, Piangaon, for the first one, but that means 50 years back, so <laughs> it's a long time ago. And uh, the second one, it was at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, among the, the, the Batistol of uh, Katmandu. That means uh, before the great changes that have transformed the uh, Japu community uh, towards the lens of the last uh, decades, as a result of modernization and disappearance of nearly all irrigated fields in, in the Katmandu Valley, replaced by houses and constructions. So um, I have also conducted uh, research on many other subjects among Newars and among non-Newars in Nepal. But um, uh, I, will, I will focus on, on these two main uh, uh, fieldwork. Um, um, and we will speak about the changes a uh, little, uh, li little after. So let's start for Piangaon. Uh, Piangaon is in Laritpur Jila. Uh, it is on the outskirts of the Katmandu Valley. It is near, very near from Wade, actually, Chapagaon. And uh, I was introduced in this village uh, by Ken Badur Bista, the younger brother of Dor Badur Bista. Dorbadur Bista uh, was born in Jaruwarasi, very near from Piangaon, actually. And Ken Badur Bista at that time was uh, the Nepali teacher in Paris University. He was the, the first Nepali teacher uh, in Paris University at, at that time uh, for three or four years. So uh, he introduced me very briefly because Jaruwarasi, the Bista clan, uh, cool, cool, cool village, cool Gaon, was very near from Piangaon. He introduced me. Uh, you can hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. Because the image sometimes is go disappearing. Uh, the voice is very clear. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. OK, OK. Um, so uh, uh, Pianga, um, uh, I settled there and I made uh, all around. I conducted uh, eight to nine months uh, field work. It was uh, in the 70s, in, in 71. And after uh, two, year, two or three years after, I went back in Piangaon to, to see, to check some details and so forth. So the, the uh, Piangaon is an introvert village, speaking a special uh, dialect, uh, which, uh, which is unknown. This dialect is uh, unknown elsewhere. And the language is Nepal Basa, but the pronunciation is a little different. And uh, it is difficult for, to understand even for the uh, for, for the Newars uh, from uh, Katmandu or Patan, uh, when they when the Piangaon people speak uh, uh, together. Uh, in addition, in Tovert village, in addition, uh, the, the 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 people in Piangaon used to marry uh, only in, inside the village. It, normally, it is forbidden to marry outside the village. So this is um, this is main characteristics, let us say, of uh, this Piangaon village. 
So uh, the, the inhabitants of, of uh, Pyongyang village at that time, nine, early, early 70s, uh, were about 500, little more than 500 inhabitants, divided about uh, 70, 70 houses. And um, the, the people, um, they, they, they belong to, um, they belong to a, a subcaste, little lower than uh, uh, Japu, and they are called either Songumi. Uh, Songu is a Newari name of uh, the village, actually. Pyangan is a Nepali name. Songu is a, the Newari name of the village. And uh, people, the people there are called Songumi, or, or also uh, Gamo. Gamo also is used uh, for, for this word. And uh, as I know, um, the, um, this uh, Pyangan village, Songumi, they, they belong to the Japu Mahaguti. Um, so, in this, uh, the main characteristic, main characteristic also is that it is a unique case village. There is only Songumi. It's there is only uh, all the people over there used to call themselves Marjan. So uh, all their name is Marjan, and um, and there is only people from Songumi in this village. There is a there was a barber. Uh, no. Which was living little outside of the, of the village, but uh, all Songumi people in, in the village. So unicast, unicast village. village. Um, so uh, it, it, it was, uh, and it still it is. It is a rich village, actually. The the the, the Marjan over there, the Songumi own lands for their own uh, their own properties, uh, and that they also they are tillers. Also, they are tilling. Um, they are tilling a field also from uh, Shrestha families in, in Chapagon and so forth. So they are both owner of the land and tiller for, uh, for other persons, for other landlords. And they are mainly uh, farmers. They were mainly farmers. Uh, they were breeding a lot of, um, of uh, buffalo for, uh, at that time, a lot of buffalo, much less nowadays, but uh, they were selling milk and it was an important income for them, not only uh, uh, harvesting rice and other vegetables and maize and so forth, but they were also selling a lot of, uh, um, of uh, buffalo, buffalo milk, even to the salty hotel. And uh, they, they, they own not, on, not only um, irrigated land, boom, where they can cultivate rice, but also a lot of paco land non-irrigated on which aloe was, uh, was still used. So um, uh, one other uh, interesting thing is uh, within the, communi the communality uh, in, in the village was very important. It was a very important character. Uh, no, no honorific term, no pol polit term between themselves within the village. This is also, it was quite interesting. So according to their uh, tradition, what they say about their origin, the origin of this village is um, uh, that it was, they are, they are telling a story about uh, 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 a Zuzu, a king from uh, Kope, from Bagdapur, who was hunting somewhere in the south of Kathmandu Valley. And uh, he met a Tamangni, uh, 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 and he, this girl become his mistress of the Zuzu, and the people of Pyongyang say they are the descendants of from this union, from uh, uh, Malak King and uh, this uh, uh, Tamang uh, Tamang girl. Um, but this is a, this is a story. Uh, for instance, uh, it, it is interesting to say that to to say that uh, uh, the, the word for maize is not koni; it is laza, which is a uh, uh, peculiar to uh, Bagdapur uh, Bassa, actually. So this is also interesting. But uh, they claim also, people, the Songumi, the people of Pyongyang, claim also they are um, uh, a kind of offshoot of Balami people from the region of Parping. And um, uh, long time ago, some many generations ago, many Pusta ago, and this perhaps is uh, there is some truth because um, they have the same physical 
physical aspect as uh, Balami. I made with field work also with Balami people. I wrote about Balami just to understand how the Songumi, uh, Balami, and uh, uh, Pauri, or which I will speak a little later, which are bamboo, walking about the bamboo. So um, it is not impossible. They have the same physical aspect as Balami, and also they have a very important piacan uh, during Yen Ya, during uh, actually this is time of Indra Chakra. So uh, the Yen Ya is uh, Indra Chakra is the 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 Dejatra, the Mul Jatra of Piangaon. And uh, uh, the, the Piacan, I, 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 the Piacan has disappeared. The, this uh, theatrical show has disappeared about 10, 15 years back because uh, the, the Piacan guru uh, and the Dime, uh, D King guru has expired. So it, it could not have been uh, transmitted. But the, 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 the Piacan over there is a story of Rajkumar, Rajkumari, Zuzu, and so forth. It is very near from what I saw also among Balami uh, in different occasions. They have the same kind of Piacan. So I guess there is some perhaps affinities between uh, Songumi and, and Balami uh, from Parping and Titsung. It is not impossible. Uh, so, you know, when, when um, when conducting a field work, you have to, to know also what is outside, eh? to, to situate your, uh, your village where you are studying uh, from uh, other groups uh, which are uh, all around. And another element also about their origin is that um, uh, Songumi, I, I have to uh, uh, go for a pilgrimage every year in the winter time to Pulan Sanku. And they say they are coming from Pulan Sanku. It is, uh, there is a Kuleswar, Kaleswar Mahadev over there, over there. It is a thousand district of Laritpur, about 10 kilometers from uh, Pyongyang. And it takes one day and a half to, to, to climb there. Uh, extreme south of uh, uh, Laritpur Jela in a Tamang and uh, a boundary tree environment. And they have to go there because they say that the, their main deity, their main god, uh, Kaleswar Mahadev, they have the temples of Kaleswar Mahadev, two temples in Kaleswar Mahadev inside uh, the village. And they say that uh, the original, the cool, the cool guard, the cool chain of, uh, of uh, this god is in Kaleswar Mahadev, uh, in south, south for much further. Um, what else can I say about uh, Pyongyang? Uh, they used to marry within close kin relatives. Uh, as soon as the genealogical, genealogical links have been forgotten. Um, uh, in in Paju Pake, in maternal side, uncle maternal side, uh, after three generations, uh, after three uh, Pusta, they, they can marry. And uh, uh, the, the, the village is divided in five, what the local people say, Guan is kind, let us say, Guti, but it's it's a kind of kin, kin group, uh, five uh, kin group, four are, uh, they, they, are they, they, they say Shiva Margi, they call uh, Maun to, well, for, during funerals to, to have their rituals, funeral rituals. And the other one uh, called Gubaju of uh, for these funeral rituals. Uh, so you have uh, in this village, uh, five different uh, king group, and each king group has to marry outside. It is exogamic, exogamic um, uh, king group five, but with uh, the territory of Pyongyang is is uh, endogamous, so the people have to marry inside the village. So it's a little complicated for village to understand about uh, kinship. Not so not not so difficult actually. Um, one other important also, but this is a characteristic of many vill Japu village and uh, all over Kathmandu Valley, uh, and not, on, not only Japu village, actually, Newa village. Um, the, the, the village is divided in two factions, in two pake, in two, two, two sides. And it seems that the origin of these two group, conflicting, conflicting group, let's say faction, conflicting group, 
um, belong to a story which happened in, in, in the 1930s or 1940s. And a girl from Pyongyang uh, was married uh, outside Pyongyang uh, with a, 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 a man, I think, belonging to a Japu group or, or, or Shwesa group. I don't exactly remember, but it, kind of intercaste uh, marriage. And the girl then uh, divorced and came back to, to Pyongyang. And the question which divided the people of Pyongyang at that time was, uh, should we have to accept this girl or not? So one group were more liberal <laughs> than the other one, accept the girl, not, not, making, uh, not uh, uh, making any uh, discrimination against this girl. And the other group were more rigorous and they say, oh, no, no, we cannot accept uh, within the Guti and, uh, and so forth uh, about this girl. So this is the origin of, of the division of uh, Pyongyang in two paquets, in two sides, uh, conflicting. And a lot of kin groups also have been divided because of this. Um, uh, well, communi communality is so quite important. And it is also interesting to know that uh, uh, the, the, the four Shivamargi uh, groups are the more uh, uh, ancient groups. The, the, the Buddhist group actually from, uh, come little, from a di little different origin. Little come, they come later and they become integrated uh, in, the, in the community. And even now, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, Buddhist group, Buddha Margi, they are not totally uh, assimilated for instance, for the celebration of the Mul Jatra, they are a little uh, aside from the other uh, Guang of uh, uh, Pyongyang. Um, what is also very important, uh, of course, it's Songumi people, there is a lot of communality between them. There is a Dej Kuti and all together and so forth. Um, a lot of rituals are celebrated uh, with uh, all the people, but they act, this uh, Songumi has other Japus actually, act as a dominant caste. That means they need the ritual services from Kojat, from low caste, as Kusle, uh, no butcher, and in ex exceptional occasions from Pore also. So they need the ritual services of these uh, uh, lower groups in the caste, uh, Newar caste uh, hierarchy. Uh, so this is, this is important uh, also to, to know. And they, they observe some uh, purity and impurity uh, uh, behavior with, with uh, this uh, uh, low caste uh, into bracket uh, people. Um, so, in spite of this uh, introversion, in spite of this introversion, the, the people of Pyongyang have many links with uh, outsiders. They are selling milk, they are selling uh, meat also, and selling uh, rice and so forth. And uh, during winter, so they, they are making Pyong. Uh, measure Pyong in Nepali, as you know, is a, a grain measure. So it, during winter time, uh, they used to, 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 to make this bamboo piang, actually, mana, pati, and so forth. And they were exchanging uh, in the different uh, places of, of Kathmandu Valley with grain, actually. So they used to, to know very well Kathmandu Valley. And Pyangao is also uh, surrounded by um, uh, Chetri, Baun, uh, Tamang villages. And it is interesting to know that the the the, the, the Japanese of uh, the Mahajan girls of uh, Pyongyang, uh, who were actually the, the, the Japanese uh, Parsi, actually, the black, black and uh, red uh, Parsi, actually has other Japus, used to speak very well uh, uh, Nepali. They can speak very well uh, Nepali with uh, uh, people from outside uh, uh, Pyongyang. They even uh, have stealer in their land. Some, Sometimes they use some uh, Kami people or Tamangni. Um, uh, from uh, outsiders. So um, it is a, a peculiar village with uh, a special dialect uh, marrying uh, within themselves, but uh, a typical, I must say, typical 
typical uh, Japu, typical uh, Japu village, uh, uh, speaking, uh, speaking uh, uh, Newabasa with a different accent. And I remember uh, uh, Satyaman Joshi, who know this village, has always expressed me to me his attachment to, to this village, to this Piangao village. For him, for Satyaman Joshi, it represents uh, one typical uh, uh, Japu village. He, he told me with a strong identity. He, he, he told me this uh, many times. Um, so perhaps uh, I, I shift to my, the, the other the other fieldwork among uh, the old Katmandu city, where uh, I studied the the the, the the 32 tools of, of Kathmandu. And of, of, of course, the, the things were very different. You know, I, I choose to study first a, a village in the country, in the, in the a village, in a rural village. And then I studied uh, urban, urban Japu. This is very important. Huh? Japu are living either in villages, but also in cities. So, uh, uh, this is, uh, you have here, uh, uh, Sanyukta has um, uh, put a photo of my book, Pierre Gaon, which it was my first uh, thesis in 77 or something. It was published by CNRS. And it was um, uh, during the Desh Jatra, during the Yeya Ye 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 uh, Jatra, people playing a Bansuri and the Kami was, was dancing uh, inside the, the procession within the within the, 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 the village. Uh, so the, the, the Batistol, the, the, the 30 tours of Katmandu, Japus of Katmandu are, the, are living within the old city, either in Sue, Datu, and Kwe part of Katmandu. You know, Katmandu is divided in these three parts, Kwe, uh, uh, high, uh, high part, uh, uh, and uh, lower part, and middle part. This is a uh, a structure which uh, uh, is concerned all uh, Kathmandu city. And uh, each of these um, uh, toll, actually, toi, toi, has a specific uh, a Japu toi guti, uh, in which membership is compulsory to, for all male members. And uh, uh, in addition, each Japu toll has a specific Ganedio shrine. Uh, which ha they have to perform a, a lot of rituals, and also a Nasadio, a Nasadio shrine. So uh, each of the 32 Japu tolls in Kathmandu city has Ganedio, has a Nasadio, and they have a, a, a Toa, toa Guti uh, for the, their male, uh, male members. Um, so of course, one thing which strikes me a lot in studying this uh, uh, Japu of uh, Kathmandu city. Uh, I remember that I conducted this, uh, this uh, field work long time ago in the 80s or beginning of the 90s. So perhaps the things have changed a little uh, nowadays, but it was the importance uh, at, at that time it was, and I think still now, uh, the importance of music. The importance of music for the Japus of uh, the, the old Kathmandu city. Um, symbols uh, and drum, especially Jime drum, uh, but they play also other uh, drum, key and so forth. But Jime drums is a very important religiously and for identity, identity of, uh, of uh, Japu people. And uh, learning, learning this uh, drum uh, is um, in walking or in a stationary uh, uh, position is compulsory for uh, for young boys, for young Martian boys. So this is little di little different in in, um, in 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 Patan in in Lalitpur city, and in uh, in Bagdapur I, I, I don't know very well, but the, the 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 rule is less is more more flexible. The 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 the, the learning of Dime. Uh, is not so uh, strictly uh, followed by all uh, 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 Japu boys. But in Pyongyang, it is the case. In, in Pyongyang, in, sorry, in, in Kathmandu, it is the case. All young Japus have to learn this uh, musical instrument and their in, in, initiation. Also, have, they have to prove some acrobatic, uh, acrobatic uh, 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 postures that they have learned during their initiation and learning. 
Anuman, uh, I, I must say that Anuman Dio is also important for uh, all these acrobatic uh, postures, learning of acrobatic uh, postures. So, um, uh, of course, uh, learning music and um, uh, so much importance of uh, uh, cymbals and uh, different kind of drums is a, a kind of uh, artistic ability, which is not so commonly associated with uh, the life of, uh, of uh, uh, farmers. So this is quite interesting. You have in, in the Japo community, uh, both the, the, the farming in the land, which is very, actually the land, the plots, the, the lands in Kathmandu Valley, uh, irrigated land is uh, plowed with uh, a coup. Huh? It's not plowed with a uh, halo, it's uh, very different. So it's a very hard job and artistic ability is associated with uh, this, uh, this uh, group. Um, uh, one other thing uh, important to know uh, concerning these uh, 32 tolls is that marrying, to marry within the toll is, is forbidden. If it is forbidden, so you have to marry outside uh, the, 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 the toll, uh, uh, outside the Twaguti, let us say. Uh, but uh, but uh, when you study the different marriage within uh, the Japu of Old Kathmandu city, you can see that there is a lot of uh, uh, endogamous marriage. That means people, the Japu of Kathmandu used to marry, not fully, but uh, let us say in high percentage between themselves, between Kathmandu themselves. And I was so surprised also that uh, <laughs> during my, my, my field work among them, um, when I, uh, I used to, to work with uh, Mehmatsa, uh, coming from uh, the upper part to going back to their family in the lower part of Kathmandu, they, uh, which is not very far actually. For them, it was uh, something very far, you know, from the upper part to the lower part of Kathmandu. <laughs> the social distance was quite uh, important. These small details are important in, in, in social anthropology. Um, and um, um, uh, yes, uh, uh, even in, during my field work, nearly 30, 35, 35 years ago, the, 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 the Japu of Kathmandu uh, city used still to, to cultivate land in the daytime uh, outside uh, Kathmandu city. Yes, formerly, you know, they, they used to, Japu used to bury, to, to, they used to build bridge around the, uh, on the Vishnumati uh, during winter time. So to, so they can, can go to the field to work on the daytime, coming back in their uh, in their um, in their toll uh, for the night. It's also quite interesting to see that uh, the, the Japu of Kathmandu are spreaded all over the city, not only in a quarter, but in the center and the, and the two main parts that uh, Kone and and uh, Tane part of. Uh, of Kathmandu. Uh, for the rest, and also, uh, I must say that um, the, the economic situation of uh, the margin of, um, of Kathmandu was uh, more difficult than the people from Pyangaon, Tetsu, and so forth, so village Japus, let us say. Uh, in the village, they have more land, and they were owner the people were owner of many lands as, 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 uh, at that time. Uh, I met in different places in Kathmandu where the, 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 the Japu family has only one or two, two free ropani and they were obliged to, to sell. And the, the, the conditions, economic conditions in some toll, in some toit, it, it was more difficult than in, in village. More, uh, also they have to, they have to, to feel more ritual obligations uh, uh, upward, uh, upper caste, uh, sakya and shwestas uh, in, in the urban context, actually. So this is, um, this was interesting. So, well, this is uh, briefly summarized. This is my main findings in these two different field work. Uh, I worked also in 
other Japu village in Tetsu, in Arecidi, in Kokana, even in Yele, in, in Patan also, in a comparative perspective. But my two main, main knowledge of Japu come version is coming from it, uh, uh, Kathmandu and uh, Piangao. Um, for me, uh, this traditional division of Japu between village and old royal cities, the old free free small kingdoms of Kathmandu, Mala kingdoms, is a very important and typical feature of a Newar organization. Uh, Japus traditionally were living as, as well within these cities and in the country. And they, this is a point, this is a paramount point for me in the study of a, a Newar civilization. Now, um, just before giving the word to the commentators and to the audience, let me uh, outline briefly also um, six main features of the economic situation, socioeconomic situation, and their role within uh, a Newar community. Uh, first, first from uh, from above, I will say the first thing is Newar society is not an homogeneous ethnic group. It is divided into caste, even into uh, impure into bracket and uh, pure caste into villages as well versus towns and in different religious affiliations, Buddhism and uh, uh, Hinduism. Uh, as you know, most of the Japus uh, in Lalitpur and Kathmandu uh, call Vajasharya priest for their rituals. But uh, in city and Pyongyang, for instance, uh, they used to call uh, uh, Baun and uh, 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 and uh, in, in, in Bhaktapur, as you know, also the, it is a rule, uh, they are mostly Hindus. Uh, of course, uh, Tamang and Magas are also not totally homogeneous group, ethnic group, yet Newars, uh, for me, surpass these uh, Tamangs and Magas in this division between themselves. And in this regard, the book of uh, Gopal Singh Nepali, long ago, is a little misleading because it, it is regrouping all uh, uh, Newar groups uh, within one book, actually. So I, my work was to go beyond political uh, uh, classification, for instance, as claimed by Nefin, and ethnic simplification, to see the, the difference between the, inside the group. And the second uh, uh, theme, the second feature uh, I want to stress is that Japu themselves are not an homogeneous group. They are, de divide, they are de divided, as I uh, explained, between villages and towns. Their economic situation is not the same everywhere. And as a rule, it seems to me higher, uh, uh, more rich in the village than in the towns. And some call uh, uh, Vashasharya, other Rajupadya. And um, also, as you know, I, I learned this uh, when uh, I arrived in Nepal in June uh, 70. I first have an assignment in, um, in the French embassy, and then I, I leave uh, diplomatic work and work. Uh, I was also uh, a French teacher in Daba school, actually, in the center of Kathmandu. And um, uh, I learned that for, for many Parvatyas people, Japu was a derog derogatory, uh, derogatory uh, term, actually, to, uh, synonym of uh, uncivilized person, a rude person, and so forth. Yet in Lalitpur and um, in Lalitpur and in Kathmandu, I, 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 I discovered that Japu are very pride of, of their status and of their uh, Japu affiliation, appellation. And uh, in, uh, in the Hindu Bhaktapur uh, region um, district, this is more, um, uh, some, it is more, uh, they are more hesitating about the pridefulness of being uh, Japu. And this explains uh, for me uh, the, 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 the social mobility uh, of Japu upgrading to uh, uh, Shrey Star caste. Uh, slowly and slowly, as described by uh, Colin Russell in one uh, famous article uh, in the 60s, in the 60s, can explain this uh, uh, difficulty for some of the Japus to, to claim their Japus. Um, here also, um, uh, 
uh, I want to, 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 to claim that the position of, of the Japu is not the same everywhere in, in the valley. So uh, my third point is that uh, traditionally Japus have a very particular way of life, house, uh, way of speaking, customs, and so forth. Uh, and, and this uh, uh, particular way of life is different from uh, Uda, uh, Shrestha, Sakya, Vajasharya. And uh, with some experience, when you enter in, in a house, when you're invited in a house, you know exactly where you, you, you can recognize the, 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 the community group, the caste group in which you are invited. Uh, my fourth point is Japus are, for me, the most indigenous group caste among Newa ethnic group. They display the more, um, to, to speak in, uh, in modern terms, they, 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 they represent more the Janjati or Adivasi uh, characteristics uh, within the, the Newa community. They are the more indigenous. For instance, uh, uh, for me, it is very interesting to see this uh, drum, uh, drum and musical instruments uh, use, use uh, within uh, Japus. Uh, to, to celebrate their main uh, uh, festivals and rituals, Japu do not need uh, um, uh, dugi and uh, uh, musical instruments from uh, butcher caste. They have their own instruments. They have their own instruments uh, and they are playing their own instruments. And this, this you have some parallels among the Janjati groups uh, in far eastern Nepal, among, uh, for, for instance, among Limbu. So this is an important uh, point uh, for me. Uh, they, 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 I think uh, the, the, the Japus also, um, uh, actually when you, you are in a village, a Japu village, the use of uh, priests from outside, either Vashasharya or, or uh, Rajopadya, is very limited. They have their own priest, uh, Achaju, uh, from the, the inner group. The Japu are... Uh, uh, mainly Japu, they have their own, in, in Pyanga also, they have their own uh, Achaju, and uh, to celebrate many of the tantric uh, rituals. They, this Achaju has received uh, a Diksha from, uh, from Karmacharya and uh, other group. So um, uh, I, I think, uh, I guess, I suggest that some many important features, cultural features, of uh, the Newars. For instance, the division between Sue and Kwe in every localities, uh, in Tane and Kone, in every locality, village and, and cities, which is a very peculiar, peculiar feature of uh, Newar culture. I think it is, I think the orig origin of this division must have some affinities with Japus. Um, and uh, the, the predominance of also of Shiguti and Sanaguti uh, within the Newas also it seems to me so important in, in rural uh, in rural Japus. Uh, 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 sometimes it is very related related to the kin group actually this uh, obligation of uh, Shiguti and Sanaguti, and it seems to me a very important characteristic of Newa culture, as you know, and perhaps the origin of this character characteristic comes from, from uh, the, the Japu. Um, the concept also of Desh Jatra, uh, Mul Jatra in every uh, localities, Newa localities, you have a main, uh, a main uh, festival attached to the territory common to all the inhabitants. This also seems to me, um, uh, more or less related to 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 to, to Japus. Um, also, other rituals I cannot go into. I have one article uh, in the Himalayan bulletin, which will come after some weeks. But also, Shika Shikavu uh, ritual division of the head of a sacrifice animal seems to me uh, the origin of this, which is rejected by um, actually Bajashaya. They say this, uh, this is not Buddhist and so forth. Uh, this something is re re related for me 
to 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 to, to Japu. My uh, uh, fifth point is um, the role of uh, 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 Japus within the Newa culture is crucial. They, of course, they provide rice, vegetables, well, formally, and other foodstuff to, to the population. And as I said, uh, uh, formally, um, they, in Kathmandu city, they used to, to, to maintain a wooden bridge uh, on, in the Vishnumati, uh, used, used by other groups. And they have ritual and secular services toward the royal temples, for example, Talaju, Talaju, there, there is a Karmacharya, there is a Diobaju, but there is also some Japu attached to the cult of uh, Talaju. They are no, also the main servants, uh, priests in, in Ganedio temples, who, in, in, nearly everywhere. And uh, 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 another, uh, another thing is the Japu girls are used as Kumari by uh, Rajupadia during uh, some tantric rituals. This is also an important feature for me. And of course, as you know, uh, ritual, they have to perform ritual and they have to perform ritual and secular services uh, towards uh, uh, a uh, uh, higher caste, Hindu or Buddhist. And this formally, the situation actually uh, it seems to be very different. They have given up all these obligations toward uh, higher groups in, in many cases, but they were acting actually as servants actually of, uh, of uh, some higher castes. Uh, one other point is uh, uh, dance performance during festivals, Japu dance performance during festivals and important ceremonies is, is uh, very important everywhere. And also, now we are in the time of Indrajatra in Kathmandu, uh, Japus plays a very important role during these festivals. Uh, Yenya in, in Kathmandu and Bungadio uh, for in Lalitpur, for instance, they are carrying palan palanquins, they are pulling cards, they are playing music during uh, these events. So, um, uh, I, I try to show by these main features that Newas, Japus are fully integrated in the social cultural life of the Newas. They are not totally isolated. They are related in by many ways within the Newa culture. They are not separated. And for instance, when I studied uh, recently Nardevi temple in Kathmandu city, I see how close they are also from Udas uh, people within uh, uh, Kathmandu, Kathmandu city. So my, my last point, and I give you the word uh, afterwards, is um, about the social uh, economical changes during the two, three decades. Uh, I have not fully documented uh, this, um, this uh, point. Uh, I was, I made, I was, uh, interested in, in, in other uh, subjects, but the, these changes has uh, changes, transform the status and the position of the Japus, according to me. Uh, by and large, uh, Japus are today less dependent upon upper castes. They are given, they are given up many of the services due to higher castes. They are, their economic status has improved a lot. They have uh, some uh, Japus are affluent today because they have, as you know, some of them have sold at very high price uh, their, some part of their lands. Some, some of them have sold all, all their lands. And so they have uh, risen in the hierarchy of caste, even if the caste system is very, it's very, still very uh, uh, strong. I was, uh, for instance, uh, very surprised to see uh, in the last, uh, last years or last decade, uh, a number of, uh, uh, of uh, Japu boys have uh, married without much problem, it seems. Uh, uh, Sakya girls, Bashashaya girls, even higher Shrestha groups. So uh, I think the, the, the uh, because of course, uh, 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 Japu sometimes now uh, uh, within the, 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 the social scope has uh, some some economic advantage because of he's sometimes richer than some Sakya or Vajashaya girl. Uh, 
So this is quite important, and perhaps we will come uh, we will come back in the discussion about this. But still, the the relation with Majupi is is, is uh, very strict. Um, and, and I will uh, finish by <laughs> I will finish by this point. Actually, it's also very surprising me uh, in the last decade uh, to see in um, in in Patan City when, when nowadays when I when I go back to, to Nepal, very I go back nearly every year to Nepal, except for this, uh, this uh, um, virus uh, uh, difficulties, uh, to see during, uh, uh, during festivals in, uh, in Lalitpur, to see um, uh, that uh, Sakyas and Bajashaya girls now are wearing uh, Japuni Parsi. Uh, the women are uh, uh, dressing as a Japuni uh, 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 as a symbol of autochtony, of indigenousness, and this is a kind of revenge, <laughs> a kind of revenge of uh, uh, Japu, it, it seems to me. Well, uh, that's all. Uh, I leave you now, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I leave you for comments and, uh, and queries about uh, this uh, small talk. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Toffin. Uh, it was uh, such an enlightening uh, kind of um, experience for us to listen to you. Uh, I think, yeah, exactly one hour. <laughs> it's been exactly uh, an hour or a couple of minutes less maybe, but uh, uh, I almost uh, felt like, I mean, you know, uh, this never uh, ended anywhere, <laughs> the whole thing about uh, this, the, the information that we kept, uh, you know, um, getting from you about the Japa community, especially Pengao and other the other 32 uh, villages, Japa villages that you mentioned where you uh, did your field work. Uh, we will we'll now move on to the next phase where um, we will get some comments uh, on today's uh, talk uh, from our invited uh, commentators. Uh, I've invited commentators today are just to let you know, maybe many of you uh, might not be aware. Uh, we have uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Geller, uh, David N. Geller from uh, United Kingdom, uh, Dr. Bal Gopal Shrestha from the Netherlands, uh, uh, Mr. Naveen Moharjan from Canada, uh, Mr. Prashant Shrestha from Nepal, and Mr. Raj Bhai from ne um, Nepal and currently in the US. So uh, before, uh, before kind of moving on to the next phase, I'll quickly like to ask, uh, just uh, taking advantage of this position of being a moderator, maybe. I'll quickly uh, like to ask you two very uh, simple questions, but maybe you could make it as short as you, you want to. Um, especially like uh, I was, when you were um, you know discussing about the intermarriage between the uh, Japu communities within the, uh, uh, you know, uh, what you termed as the uh, Tuaguti, Tuagutis, they have to marry, uh, marry outside the Tuagutis, uh, where, where you did your field work. Um, I was kind of uh, remembering uh, uh, a chapter by uh, Dr. Balgobal Shrestha on, uh, in, in his uh, uh, 2012 book uh, on Saku, the sacred town of Saku, where he mentioned like how in Saku, the intermarriage and interdining between the Prajapati and the Japus existed before the restriction, there was some restriction, but it was lifted, uh, I mean, it, it, it isn't there anymore. And by 2000, like almost two you know, decades ago, it disappeared. Uh, how how he saw it gradually disappearing. If you had any similar uh, observations uh, in Pyanga or any other Japu communities, uh, Japu uh, villages, uh, where you did your field work, you could please uh, uh, let, uh, you know share that information with us. Uh, you could make it very short as well. The other thing was, you know, where when you uh, uh, did your field work, uh, when you did your research in Naradevi uh, uh, Temple, uh, the uh, which we know as Neta Ajima, Neta Bulu Ajima. Uh, there, I think uh, in your um, 2019 paper in Sinas, you, you mentioned, um, you know, uh, how the uh, Japu community and the Uraya community, the two others and the uh, Japus had their own, you know, perfect vision of what their roles are in, 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 in you know, the different uh, practices within the temple premises or, or within, the, within the religious uh, rituals and all. They knew what their roles are exactly, and uh, but they have their own vision of the divine temple and uh, you know their own roles. So, it, like, what could have um, what could have actually coordinated these two different communities and two different you know and, and their respective roles? Is there any insight from you? Like, uh, what do you think could have you know motivated or kind of uh, created this kind of perfect coordination between these communities? If you had any comments on that. Um, so for the first questions, I cannot say. Uh, I have not uh, documented this uh, intermarriage, uh, the quantity of intermarriage 
according to the different places also. Um, but uh, the intermarriages between uh, Japus and other uh, Newa caste, uh, people, some young people uh, in, in the audience perhaps will, will uh, speak about this. Uh, but it seems in Pyongyang, uh, the things are a little changing, but the, the, the Takali, you know, the Takali are very strict. And uh, there is uh, uh, every, every marriage uh, in Pyongyang has to be uh, first uh, examined by the, the Takali of Pyongyang. And if, they, if, the, if the Takali don't, don't want this marriage because it is not according to the rule, they will not come to the ceremony. So uh, still the rules are the rules are very important, especially from the religious, uh, socio-religious side. So if, but, if, uh, sorry, if, if the Takali doesn't uh, attend the ceremony or the wedding or uh, the feast or whatever, what does that imply? Is it just a disrespect to the, is it just disrespecting the family or, or does it just make them out of the clan? They, are not, they, are not, they will not be fully recognized as Songumi people. And they will have difficulty to join the uh, uh, Guti, Shiguti, and so forth. Uh, so still, I think the things are ch changing because uh, everything is changing in Kathmandu Valley. But uh, still, these old rules maintained by Takali people, you know, the, 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 uh, among, uh, among uh, uh, Japu in general, the, 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 between Kokali and Takali, uh, the, the, the the importance, uh, the, the rules maintained by the Takali are, is very important. And the hierarchy between Kokali and Takali is very important. So, uh, and uh, now coming to, uh, to Nardevi, um, Udas and uh, Udas and Japu in that case. Uh, uh, when I made the study, uh, I noticed this is in my article, the Tuladar said that formally the dance uh, incarnating the different uh, uh, matrika and uh, ajima, um, sweat kali and so forth. Uh, it, it was belonging to, uh, to, to them, to, 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 to Lada people. And uh, there were uh, some difficulties. Uh, and, and this is often the case. In, in, um, in, in Japu community, in, in a lot of dance, of Piakon, religious dance, according to the people, they were formerly um, they were formerly in, in the hand of a higher group who, who give, give their, uh, uh, their, um, their obligation and uh, dance practice to lower groups because it's too dangerous. Too dangerous and also for uh, when uh, you have to marry a girl, you know, the, 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 the brother has to swallow swallow blood during, <laughs> during sacrifice, uh, they don't feel very easy for, for this. And it seems that it happened for Tuladas. They give the dance responsibility uh, to Japu. Of course, there is a lot of hierarchy between the two groups. They have their own vision, uh, Udas and, um, Udas and um, uh, Japu. But, uh, but many Tuladars, in Kathmandu told me that they were uh, quite near from uh, Japu actually. And uh, well, of course they were Buddhist. Uh, they were Buddha Malabi uh, from, from, from uh, both sides. So of course, so some tension and some uh, community and tension hierarchy between the two groups, so to say. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Finn. So it appears that uh, the, their religious commonality, uh, you know, um, has brought them together and fitted them well, yes. but at the same time, the Japu community taking the harder jobs. Yes, uh, exactly. And, you know, uh, compared to other other stuff, it might have helped them to kind of, kind of fit in more coordinated way. Uh, higher and uh, more dangerous, more dangerous because yeah. incarnating a goddess is is not an easy thing, you know. So dangerous is it? Uh, like did, I think you mentioned about the drinking of the blood, or maybe like more acrobatic work that they need to do, as you mentioned earlier. Uh, they, uh, even even I mean, yeah, I mean, there are many dangerous stuff to you know things to be done. Thank you very much, Dr. Finn. I would uh, I would not take much of your time uh, myself, uh, and would like to moderate it further. So first of all, uh, I would like to request. Uh, uh, I think he's already in here. I would like to request uh, Professor Dr. Gellner from Oxford University to. Uh, uh, kind of uh, 
give us his comments about today's talk. Uh, Professor Gellner, if you could unmute yourself and uh, if possible, please uh, turn your camera on as well, please. Yeah, I, I, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so I don't, I mean, I, it's, um, I mean, the thing that um, those of you who are not in the kind of academic world of uh, now our studies should know, uh, if you don't know already, is that Gerard Toffa, I mean, not only has he been studying the Nawaz longer than anyone else uh, currently alive, but he's written far more uh, and far more widely. I mean, most people who've worked on the Nawaz have worked on one city or one village, um, uh, sometimes one subcast, uh, but he's, he's, he's worked pretty much all over. So um, um, uh, there's a huge body of work. And one of the unfortunate things, um, um, for those of you who don't read French, is that quite a, quite a large uh, chunk of it is, um, is, is, is not in English, it is in French. Um, so I suppose um, if any, those of you who do read French and can, uh, can translate, uh, I think uh, that, that is one of the kind of first um, prerequisites, if you like, for now our studies, if you're interested, um, it would be to translate some of that, some of that work. And there's, there are many, many wonderful books, um, um, uh, you know, about, about now our religion from, from um, uh, uh, about, uh, particularly about festivals, about the, the um, Mala kings uh, and his great kind of his magnum opus, the uh, religion and society among among the Nawaz, which was his habilitation thesis, uh, yeah, you know, all of that deserves um, uh, to be available. Um, so, I mean, you can translate it directly into Nepal Basha if you wish, um, but translating it into English would would make it available for a wider uh, audience. Um, I, I I I I think it's probably. I mean, I, I, and and some of it, I have to say, some of his some of his work has come, you know, big surprise. I mean, the the, the research on the Japus of Kat, the, the thirty two tolls of, of Kathmandu um, was really pathbreaking and surprising. I mean, not surprising not just to himself, but I think to everyone. I mean, obviously, it wasn't surprising to those of you who are Japus from Kathmandu. You knew it already, but uh, but I don't think many other people did know about that and the importance of music. Uh, initiations and so on. I mean, that, that was genuine, really surprising and interesting uh, and new and fresh work, which, which shows that right under your nose in the capital city, it's possible to find uh, new things. Um, and, um, uh, and he's also written a very nice personal memoir, uh, the, the Drums of Kathmandu, Les Tombeaux de Kathmandu, which, uh, which, which, is, which is basically tells some of the history a little bit, uh, it tells more of the history that we've heard a smaller part uh, about today. So I could recommend all of those works works to you. Um, I, I don't think it's um, it really appropriate for me and in, in the present uh, 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 present audience for me to sort of expatiate about Nawa culture. I mean, this is a bit like teaching your grandmother to suck eggs. So um, I, I would like to hear from um, the other people in the audience. I, I just leave one question. I mean, because, um, you know, Bhaktapur, Bhaktapur is, is a world apart. Bhaktapur is different. Um, and uh, even though, even if Gerard has not actually uh, conducted fieldwork there, he must have visited, he must know, he must have some ideas uh, about how to distinguish that difference. Um, uh, and um, I mean, one 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 way in is there's a, there's an old article which deserves to be made available on the internet by a man called Peter Webster, who was an, a news, he was actually British, but he's long settled in New Zealand, and he wrote a wonderful little article called, um, called "To Plow or Not to Plow: A Noah Dilemma." And in that article, he discusses the whole question of this plowing taboo in great depth. And he actually, he got so intrigued and so fascinated by this question that he sort of mapped and traveled all over uh, and to try and work out, um, you know, and, and he, 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 he describes this rather hilarious incident where he's in, um, um, sorry, I'm having a senior moment here, the village north of, north of Kathmandu, where they are actually, these Karmacharyas. Um, anyway, he's, he's walking around this, 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 this Japu village in the fields and um, he sees a Japu plowing and he goes up to him and says, what are you doing? And the Japu says to him, well, what does it look like I'm doing? And he says, uh, but, 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 but you're a Japu, you're not supposed to plow. 
<laughs> and he suddenly realized that there are certain parts of the valley where plowing is done and other parts of the valley where it is not done and 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 working out the historical reasons for that and so, well, i mean this is bringing me back to my question about Bhaktapur, whether Bhaktapur is uh or Kope is 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 how distinctive it is and um i mean we know i mean i think we know i mean and again um Raj Bhaiji will 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 correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, but uh, we think we know that, or at least I thought it was the case anyway. The last time I asked about this, which was some years ago, uh, you know, uh, Bhaktapur uh, Japus are not part of the Mahaguti, and there is a kind of cultural split and a historical split between the, the west and the east of the valley. So I'd like, I, 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 that's my one question to Jerry, is, you know, to some reflections more. I mean, he's talked about splits and he's talked about the fact that Nawas are not homogenous and that even Jabus are not homogenous. But I, uh, the, 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 the particular heterogeneity that I would like to know about or would like to have more understanding of is that split between the West and the East of the Valley and particularly between Bhaktapur and Kathmandu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh... Uh, Professor Gellner. Um, so especially, uh, I think, I mean, uh, what a wonderful, uh, you know, kind of introduction to uh, Dr. Dufa, uh, just with a phrase uh, when he said, uh, someone who's done the, the, done the longest, is, uh, someone who has researched about Nepal and our culture and society for the longest period of time that we know of that in itself uh, speaks a lot about uh, Dr. Tafang, I think. And um, uh, we had a, a good one with the uh, heterogeneity or within or the Newars, within the Japus, and there's, it seems as there's nothing homogeneous within our society and culture. Um, so uh, I think now we will uh, move on to our next commentator. He's also with us here, uh, Dr. Balgopal Shrestha from the Netherlands. Um, I would like to request uh, Dr. Shrestha to... Uh... Mr. Jalapar, Namaskar. Namaste, Namaste. <laughs> I'm really delighted to have this opportunity. Uh, thank you, Sanita, for uh, organizing this uh, uh, great uh, talk today from Zera. Uh, I've seen him after a long time, I must say, uh, but uh, probably I'm the person who knows him for a very long time, since 1991. Uh, 19, 19, <clears throat> I, I also had an opportunity uh, interviewing him for enough that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as David already uh, mentioned, he is the person who has been engaged in carrying out research uh, on Newars for such a long period of time since 1970, uh, 1970 exactly, I must say, yeah, when I checked his uh, publication like that. So it is amazing. So, uh, it is more than seven, uh, 50 years now, exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, <clears throat> his first book actually about the Pyongyang was in uh, French, uh, though I couldn't uh, really read that. It was fascinating a book about Pyongyang, but uh, he has published elsewhere about Pyongyang also. Uh, uh, so as he always uh, used to talk, like he first didn't uh, did his research into Kathmandu, but he started his research in periphery, like a small village. Even he did research uh, among uh, Balamis, and other uh, small villages, then he came to Kathmandu. And uh, he has been uh, most amazing about Zirai that every year, year after year, he has been publishing so many articles, so many books. That is amazing for me. I, I was initially not, a, not an anthropologist. I began my research uh, with anthropology and eventually became an as doing my research on anthropology, but I have benefited a lot from his work. Uh, in my Sanko book, probably the longest list of uh, references you will find from Topa. Actually, uh, you have uh, uh, David Gellner on the one hand, and Zera on the other hand, two great anthropologists who have been uh, 
doing their research among neighbors, we must be very thankful and grateful to them for it. Especially Zera, what has he, he has been doing is uh, also he has he is being able to update his research. Uh, he started his uh, research in the seventies, but uh, when we see his uh, research about Japuji in Kathmandu, uh, first he published that uh, farmers in Kathmandu, but later he also uh, uh, in depth uh, did his uh, ethnographic research about Japu Mahaguti, all new uh, development, ethnic uh, uh, uprising. So these sort of things, I'm really uh, pleased uh, to read from him. And he also has uh, so many uh, things he has thought up, uh, not, not only Japu, he, he has written about Chitrakars, he has written about Rajapadhyay, uh, Rajapadhyay, uh, and uh, not only about uh, these caste and caste, uh, uh, inter-caste relation and uh, their duties, but also he has talked about, uh, written about festivals, uh, life cycle ritual, and especially uh, I have been always been thinking uh, when I talked with him, uh, interviewed him in 1991, I, I was asked, I asked him one of the questions was, would your publication would be published in the Newark language any time soon? He was not sure, I was not sure, still nothing has happened in fact. It is almost 30 years, but we didn't see his uh, magnus Ms. Optus, uh, they like uh, the Neva society, uh, Neva ritual and society, this big volume, more than six, uh, almost 700 pages book that I would like to see translated into Neva language actually, that yet to be taken place. Also, so many other books, so many articles he has uh, written, uh, written, but uh, for Neva readers especially, they are not yet accessible. For uh, certainly a large, uh, uh, scholars from around the globe benefited from his uh, uh, publication, but never themselves are not yet being able to benefit from them, especially his uh, French articles. I, I even, I cannot really read, but in, in French also, he has contributed so many uh, articles, so many books about Nevers. So one day we'll see, we hope that it will happen. But when I, I don't know, probably uh, it will take place soon since in Newa society, new things are taking place, like we have Nepal Basa Academy, Newa Dabu. Probably they will be uh, uh, eventually will take interest on your work and will be translated in our language. Let's see what will happen in future. Uh, thank you. I think uh, uh, I don't have much question to ask uh, uh, better uh, about Japu's. Uh, I would say uh, Raj Bhai would uh, talk more. Uh, actually, in Kathmandu, I also had a uh, chance uh, doing some research among Japus in 1992 94 with uh, one Dutch anthropologist, Beth uh, That time, we studied all 32 poles of uh, Jap Japus and uh, their uh, uh, relation with the uh, festivals goodies like that. Uh, it is really amazing community, Japu community of Kathmandu, unlike uh, elsewhere in Kathmandu, as he described in his chapter, uh, they are uh, much more close society. They even cannot marry uh, uh, outside Kathmandu. Uh, more, more probably they marry within 32 tolls, but not within one toll. Uh, they cannot uh, marry. If they are married, they, they would be punished. Uh, or expelled from the Sibuti like that. Uh, and when the, any Jatra takes place, takes place in Kathmandu, they are the most important people. They would play the, the uh, music. They would uh, carry the, the palanquin or chariots. And, uh, and the next uh, uh, interesting thing about the Jatras and the Japur relations is that uh, when the chariot pass each quarter, they would uh, visit their uh, daughters. Nyamaza, they would be, the Bhemaza would perform uh, puja and offer food, drinks like that. I had this uh, chance seeing all, and Jera, of course, he did. 
uh, now I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sreshta. Thank you very, very much. Uh, what, you brought um, up some of, some of the very interesting uh, facts and uh, all the brief, I think we enjoyed listening to you as well just now. And uh, what an interesting thing to uh, actually realize that uh, Tufa has not only been writing and researching for the longest period of time, but also the variety of work that he has presented to us is in itself uh, quite un unimaginable. Like some 12 years ago, when I was researching about Chitrakars for a docu film that I was planning to make, it was not possible to study about the wall arts uh, uh, that the Newars do without learning about the Chitrakars. So, and, and I found like uh, Dr. Tufan has written so much about Chitrakars and I felt like, okay, who, who else has written so much and in such, in de such depth about, you know, the Chitrakar community itself. So, but then uh, after a few years, what I find is like, he's also written about the mass dances in Harisiddhi Jala and elsewhere. He's also now written about, uh, also about the Pyangao and he's written about the Japu community. So the variety kept on, uh, you know, growing and uh, that in itself amazes uh, every student and every reader of uh, Dr. Tufan, every other, you know, uh, every time they pick up his books. So uh, we'll move on to our next commentator. So we have got, uh, what we have today is a range of, uh, uh, you know, commentators from various, uh, um, you know, experience levels and uh, experiences in Nepal and academics. We have uh, someone from Canada here. Uh, his name is, um, our friend is Nabin Moharjan and he's from, um, uh, I guess in Toronto in Canada, and he has just completed his uh, doctorate uh, also in sociology. And I would like he to hear some of his comments today. Nabin Maharjan, if you could uh, unmute yourself and uh, kindly turn on your camera, please, to uh, provide some comments today. Great. Uh, thank you, Santaji, uh, for providing opportunity in this you know, the platform. Uh, uh, let me correct you first, you know, I, I'm about to defense, you know, this, you know, I have submitted in my draft, uh, this is draft, so maybe within a couple of weeks, uh, I will be defending my paper, my the, uh, dissertation, um, but thank, uh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this, you know, gathering. Uh, I learned a few things, you know, uh, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, I learned that it's not Profin, it's uh, Tofa, uh, Dr. Tofa, so thank you uh, for, you know, giving me the new, you know, the way you know I was pronouncing Dr. Tofin is not the right way, and so this is how we are learning right every day. So that's the first learning that I had, and the other learnings you know that uh, brings to me you know that uh, thank you for taking us to the 1960s 70s way of living, especially me belonging to Japu community. Uh, when I was you know in I born in 19 late 80s, so I I didn't know about you know the how Japu lifestyle in 1960s 70s. But I have heard so many stories about you know the, how my parents, grandparents, generationally how we were oppressed by the you know the upper caste, so-called upper caste within the Newar community, as you said, and Dr. Jain also highlighted the heterogeneity within the Newari community. So it's very interesting to you know explore those you know the dimension within the Newari community. And you know, I, I also, you know, I, if you see, you know, my, you know, there's no surname because that I, I know, you know, how the pain that we had gone through when we had, we were in child, right? We, we were living with the neighborhood where is, you know, more stressors, sakyas. So there's some kind of segregation within, you know, Japu community in urban cities, as you mentioned in your paper also that urban cities people, how they have more, you know, the discriminatory, you know, the, those norms and values within the urban cities comparing to uh, Pyongyang. So it's you know fascinating to see the cross comparison of uh, geographical territories based you know operation or you know the uh, the discrimination in Japus. So coming you know that uh, that's you know that uh, that how I feel you know now now you know, we should that break those you know identities which you you know which you said you know we have to go into those culture to understand for. So it's very interesting to see how the Japu's, you know, identity, the dress, the culture is slowly moving into other communities, or other within, you know, the other other uh, castes, uh, like the dress, you know, the other uh, Newari girls are wearing the Japu dress that, which you know, which where you know my mothers, you know, other people feel doesn't feel good, you know, wearing those uh, uh, hakupatasi in 1980s or 90s because we will be identified as the Japu's. So it's very interesting to see, you know, how it is, you know, again, changing the dynamics of wearing those dresses. So it's very interesting to see that part as well. And I learned a lot about, you know, how Japus in Pyongyang are more, you know, the women who speak 
different languages other than the Newar language. So it's very intriguing for me to understand, to know those, you know, in 60s and 70s, how they have developed themselves to assimilate with different diverse culture. Uh, the other part, I, uh, what I learned from your uh, presentation was regarding the the traits of Japos. Really, you know, it's very interesting to go through all those traits that six traits, uh, six or seven traits that uh, traits that you have in characteristics that you have mentioned about. Um, I, I also, you know, within you know Japu community, like on uh, Japu Japu on uh, Japu Samaj in Lalitpur, how they are working right now. And how they try to, you know, use that Japu derogative term into a more provocative uh, way, you know, to 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 have those, you know, space claiming those space claiming those political, social, cultural rights that they have been, you know, discriminated for so long. So it's very interesting to see the new dynamics, which is not covered in your presentation. Presentation, but being myself, you know, ha having being a part of that uh, Japu Sama has really helped me to, you know, to go. Why you know these you know the Japu identity is so now you know becoming so rigid or indigenity of you know the discourse that is going on even in Dr. Glenner's paper I could see those you know the indigenity discourse coming out so it's very interesting to see to to study those you know the timeline how you know it is evolving and how we, where it will go so it, it's very interesting for me as a young researcher to go through these you know the those learnings knowledge that you you have you know gather in your whole lifetime so it's very fascinating for me uh, i don't have many you know issues uh, my, many you know uh, many questions only two particular questions that i really want to know from your side uh, first of all you know uh, taking us to 1960s 70s way of you know japu living i would like to know a little bit more about the political and the you know the changes that brought uh, by, you know, the laws, like, you know, in 1960s, 70s, you will say uh, land reform, like King Mahendra also reformed land, right? So uh, the, they didn't have land uh, rights, you know, there's, I don't see much, you know, the rights of Japus among those lands, like they are also like very similar to Kamayas or let's say uh, tenant of those lands. So after the, you know, land reform, do you see any changes on the, you know, uh, on the, uh, political or identity itself, social identity. And also uh, the second question is related to your own personal experience in countering those Japus in 1960s, 70s. And do you work with the Japu people? Do you have any research assistant or any you know, translator from Japu community who really help you to understand the, their own lived experiences other than Bista or other cast? So these are the two questions I really want to know from your side. And thank you so much, uh, Samitaji, as well as uh, Dr. Tofi for your Tofi for your you know maybe I'm pronouncing right <laughs> Dr. Tofi Tofi for your you know for insights and all this you know the space and gathering uh, for today's gathering. So thank you so much, Samitaji, and it's over to you. Yeah, I think uh, Navinji is just uh, Mr. Morgan just asked a, a couple of questions to um, Dr. Tofa, and uh, we'd like to hear those answers before we move. Uh, Further, please. Thank you. Uh, you want me to uh, do answer to the question? Yes, sorry? yes please. Um, uh, yes, about uh, uh, about land reform in uh, post Rana in post Rana period. Of course, uh, the, the land reform has a great impact uh, among uh, among tailors and tenants. Uh, you know, the the rules were uh, uh, the rules were uh, very in favor of uh, tenants and the, in the re land reform, and um, uh, some Japus. I cannot say I, I cannot give you any figure, but some Japus benefited a lot, uh, and they even sometimes register their land, uh, booty land, in, in their names actually, uh, because of this uh, land reform. So uh, um, it, it, it may, and I, I remember, I remember that. Uh, the, the, the tenant who, who suffered a lot of the old in the old system uh, before the land reform was it was in Kathmandu. I, I found really uh, 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 very poor uh, uh, Japus because they were tenant uh, before and and the, the situation after they improve a lot. The 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 Japus uh, benefit a lot from uh, from this land reform house in, in many many other tenants in, in Nepal. Now, my, my personal uh, work uh, among Japu uh, in Pyongyang, 
uh, it was impossible. I, I work alone. I have no assistant. Mm -hmm. I work alone and I was living uh, uh, with, uh, in a house with other, in a family. And uh, because it, it, I, I, I first, because I, I already learned uh, a newari with one of my students, uh, Raj Bandari in, in Kathmandu. Uh, I, I thought at the beginning to introduce one assistant from outside uh, to, to, to run more easily, more quickly with, uh, with young but it, it was in people. The, the people were rejecting. They were accepting me, but if, they, if I used to, to leave as another Japu, they were, they were too sus suspicious about Shwe uh, stars uh, uh, from Chapagon and so, and so forth. So I could not introduce uh, any assistant and I, I collected all the data by, by myself. Uh, among the, um, among the, um, the 32 tools uh, in Kathmandu, I use an assistant because there was uh, 32 tools to, to survey it. So it was too difficult. I use uh, an assistant. Who was who helped me also uh, a long time ago in, in Panauti, uh, and um, uh, I, I, I noticed also that uh, uh, because I worked in Tetsu also uh, in, in the in the 70s in a village near uh, near Pyongyang to have some uh, comparative view, and I noticed that uh, uh, the the the, the be, between 1970 and and 2000, the, the, the Newar were more open to foreign to foreigners. And they were not; they were less afraid, perhaps because it was a political uh, or the Panchayat system. I don't know. But uh, the, the Newars become more and more open to to to, to Bideshi and to, to foreigners uh, in the course of decades. And this, uh, I found, I found also uh, among Japus also in Kat, in Kathmandu. So this is uh, quite, quite interesting. And the prineness, the prineness of being a Japu, was so surprising because I heard this Japu has a derog derogatory term for used by Paratya and so forth. I use, uh, I was very surprised by the prineness uh, 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 after after two thousand. Uh, increasing, increasing after the, the last decades, the prineness of being Japu, you know, because this course, as you said, of indigenousness and so forth played a greater role. Um, so yes, uh, these were the, my, my few my few answers. Uh, thank you so much. Perhaps, uh, perhaps, uh, well, thank you for the words also of uh, of Balgopal and uh, David Gellner, the, the words they used for me uh, concerning. This division between um, eastern and eastern part, western and eastern part of uh, Kathmandu. Um, I, I must say that um, uh, the, 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 uh, there is also a Japu Guti, a Japu Mahaguti has not, the Japu Samaj in Lalitpur. Uh, they are, uh, they, they, they don't want to be assimilated with uh, Japu Mahaguti, you know? They have their own, they say they have their own habit, their own uh, distinctiveness and so forth. So, um, so there is uh, the, the Eastern part, which is, I think, perhaps related to, um, I think, perhaps so some Hindu, Hindu culture. I, I, well, I, I, have no, I have not fully documented, and I have not fully documented this, uh, this, uh, this uh, question, but um, uh, perhaps it, it, it is maybe to, to the Hindu, more Hindu influence, more Hindu impact in, in, in Kwape, uh, but I am not sure. There is also a, a political discourse, uh, which is important in, in, in Kwape. I, I, I publish a, a, a long review of Yogesh, Yogesh Raj uh, article about uh, uh, the political movement in um, in uh, and the role of the Japu, especially in um, in Kope, I, I think that political uh, impact also is is somewhere there. Well, anyway, anyway. It's a review on uh, the book uh, History of Mindscape. So yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, uh, thank you. Well, and the, 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 in this book, uh, I don't remember the name of this uh, of this person, but the, the, this, the description of uh, of the Japus of Bagdapur. Uh, 
in the in the 40s or 30s was really dramatic actually yeah. Uh, yeah. this course official discourse thank yeah, you true. Uh, the, 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 there's some uh, in the book i think i remember there was some incidents of lynching uh, even covered and uh, i think the person uh, choguti choguti who's yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. and uh, i think he passed away some 8 years ago um, and yeah, and no one actually talked about him anyway, and which is you know like quite disheartening to me as well, living in London and uh, learning so much from Yogesh Raz, who's my teacher himself. So um, I'm I'm really glad actually, no, uh, Navin Marjanji, uh, Mr. Marjan is uh, joined from uh, uh, Canada. Not only that, because like I'd invited uh, representatives from uh, Japu Samaz uh, in Yella who couldn't attend here unfortunately but i'm quite glad that at least you are representing them in in some way or the other and yeah. uh yeah i'm uh, still uh, just let me say that i'm still in you know one of the youngest you know council member in japu samas so you? I, yeah oh. and i served for like in you know, i served for like six years with i work with japu samas uh, i work you know i did research for socio-economical status of japus in japu Lalitpur. so so that's why you know it's very fascinating to go through you know Dr. Mm -hmm. Goff in you know in you know this platform to you know to discuss about the status mm -hmm. and growth and you you know being you know inviting me so it's well, it was so exciting so I was wake up around early two o'clock morning today to you know to know yeah him. most of us actually um, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I met uh, Mr. Maharajan I think some four or five years back in Toronto and uh, it was that yeah. one uh, uh, you know kind of uh, visit but then thank you very much for uh, accepting this uh, invitation and um, you know kind of. Uh, it's, uh, we've been trying to pronounce uh, uh, Dr. Kefan's uh, uh, full name as as uh, carefully as uh, we can, and I also myself being uh, uh, you know more familiar with English, I used to always read just Tuffin, Tuffin, and then I think uh, one fine day uh, Bal Gopal Day, he kind of uh, was very very harshly he kind of taught me like Sanita, this is not you shouldn't say Tuffin, it's too far and like. And the word is in my mind since then. I think Tufa in Urdu means storm. So I can always remember that word. And it, you know, exactly. yeah. and the only reason why I want to learn French is to read two books in my life. One is Sylvain Levy's <laughs> Le Nepal, and the other one would be Tufa's uh, Tengao. So uh, also as, as uh, Mr. Morgan rightly uh, highlighted about the fact about the dress and all that, uh, I, I were uh, for the first time the Japulon uh, in, in London for a Mahapuja ceremony like 11 years ago when we organized this. And all my uh, parents, my uncles and aunts, even my friends' parents were all very concerned, like, why are you wearing this dress? Because you, you're not Japu. The, the other point was like, you're not Japu, why are you wearing this? Uh, and for your information, I'm stressed out, <laughs> just in case. And uh, also, uh, their point was, have you ever seen your father, your uncles or anyone in your family wearing this? They always wear plain dresses. And I mean, like, I was not very familiar with this. I was not even into Newa studies and all uh, back then. Uh, but then, as you can see now, and as uh, Dr. Tufan rightly highlighted, like as a revenge or something, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, uh, that actually the female dress, the Hakupatasi and the Japulan, actually in today's time represents the Newa attire in all different ways, uh, whether it's right or wrong, but it is. Um, so we'll move on to our fourth speaker. We are keeping Mr. Razvai Zakami as the last person because we know that we all want to hear from him. And uh, we will move on to Prasant uh, Shrestaji, Prasant Dai, as I call him, from Panti, or Panauti, uh, who has, uh, I think for the last decade or so, he has worked very closely with uh, Dr. Tufan. Uh, he's a photographer himself, very kind of professional photographer and into a lot of cultural activities as well. He has a, a Ponti Preservation Center and library in his, in his local uh, place there. Uh, I'm not very uh, inf informed about it because I haven't been myself, but I'll let him speak about it. Thank you very much, uh, Prasandai, for, in, uh, for accepting this invitation and please share your experiences of uh, and, and working patterns and good and bad things about, you know, <laughs> what do you, how, do, how do you find working with Dr. Tufan, please? Uh, please unmute yourself. Yeah, Namaste. Everyone hearing me? Uh, yes, perfectly. Okay, so Namaste and Jodhrapa. I'm uh, in the background with my small library. I name it uh, Panuti Study Center. Uh, since the earthquake, 
it was before a liquid shop, a wine shop. I terminated this wine shop myself and turned into the library now. Uh, it's about library with almost all book by Gerard sir. So namaste, Gerard sir. Uh, for me and uh, about Gerard sir, it's a long story. Uh, I want to share some of my life working for Gerard sir as a photographer. Since 2010, we are working together in so many topics. He gave, uh, he gave me the task and I need to follow. Every task was quite interesting and difficult one. It took some time, four years, six years, and some time more. So for me, it's like working with Gerard Sars, like uh, learning so many things about Nevada society and cultures, especially the Nevada society. So it is like, uh, it's almost 12 years we are knowing each other, learning lots from him. And till now we have, I think I just calculated more than 10 to 12 books we have recently done with Gerard sir, working with him as a photographer and sometime resource person. Uh, and so far we are now completely Panauti. It's about his work, his photographs on Panauti, almost about 50 years. And we are naming it Changes in Panauti. This book will show you how the Panauti is still preserving <clears throat> its architectural style, still preserved. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, some things are changing rapidly, like, you know, the new buildings are seen everywhere surrounding the Panoti. And this book, we can say it uh, a brief research by Gerard sir. I'm very thankful for this book. This book will definitely change something in future for the young generation and the people of Panoti. Especially this book is, for me, it's like a dream comes true, actually. It's like my dream to work with Gerard sir, as a son, as a friend, as a colleague, everything you can say. It. And for me, it's like a, a book, not only a book. It's my truly a dream. I have been uh, requesting him for more than eight to nine years. Let's make a book about Panoti. And you see the book one in the back side, you see the Panauti. He especially published for me. In my photograph on the cover. Uh, the old one we have here is uh, uh, with, with his pictures. But uh, comes through also. And this book is the back side. It's like Panauti, past and present. It's a book about uh, uh, my dream, I already told you. And it's a gift for Ponoti people, I think. And I thank for accepting me as a um, photographer for his work. Especially when you requested me, I ran, at, ran out for uh, uh, taking pictures. I didn't say even rain, even day, even night. I do whatever I can say or you can say. So it's, free, it's for me, whenever you give me a task, it's a kind of learning loss for me by following the task. And finally, I want to thank you for listening to me, and especially Sayyidi Dai, uh, Sayyidi Ji. Uh, uh, requesting or, or, or giving about Gerard sir. So I really miss you and want to hug you from here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prasanth Jasadai. Thank you so much uh, joining uh, from Panoti. 
And uh, we must have, like most of us here are interested or uh, studying sociology and culture and um, you know, arts or society uh, of Nepalese community, which is the Nevars. And we must have heard, not just myself, we must have heard from many of us around, like what do you actually get from studying about uh, culture and society, right? And the other question will be always like, what changes can you bring by studying a culture? What is a tangible change that you can bring, you know, and it, it, perhaps like we all believe that there will be some change and it will come gradually when people are more learned and informed about their own society and culture through books and dissemination of knowledge. Uh, but then one big example here is in front of us today in Prasanda's uh, video, Gerard Tufan's work, what can Gerard Tufan's work change? In a nutshell, and, and I'm not being funny, but in a nutshell, it can change a wine shop into a bookshop. That is Gerard Tufan's work. Okay, thank you so much for inspiring, and there, may there uh, may in the whole world, all the wine shops be changed. Yeah. Bookshops one day. Uh, I hope uh, uh, for tea totals like me, it is all fair, but maybe not everyone would like it. Sorry, will... One more thing, one more thing. One more thing. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah, I have a uh, you know. Uh... Hello. Almost all of them. Oh right. So and, if, if we need Dr. Tufa's work, we need to come to Panati, Panti. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Please welcome. Always. True. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we'll move on to now our next commentator for today. And our next commentator will be uh, our last and next commentator who we've been uh, waiting for. Uh, Oh, sorry. So we have uh, earlier when uh, Dr. Tufan shared us about the traits of uh, Japu community, he also mentioned that wherever Japus went and formed their town, uh, villages, their cultural community, they always had a uh, Ganesh shrine as well. And uh, incidentally, or I don't know, so fortunate to see that there is a Ganesh painting behind uh, Mr. Razbai Jakami today, mm -hmm. uh, even when he is in the United States. So thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jakami, the president of Chapu Mahaguti, the current president. And he has joined us like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning from wherever he is now. Thank you so yeah. much. Jozalpa, Laskus Dutsida. Please uh, share your com uh, comments for today's talk. Okay. Uh, uh, namaste and Jozalpa. And thank you uh, to Mr. Samuel Krasresta and WNO for organizing this uh, important uh, program. Uh, and namaste to Dr. Uh, David Gellner, uh, Dr. Balgobar Sisters, uh, and Mr. Prasanta, and especially to Dr. Uh, uh, Gerald Pofan uh, from Jaffa Magwati. Mm. Uh, we got an opportunity uh, to come to know many things about uh, Jaffa community. Uh, from this Zoom program of world renowned our scholar uh, from Dr. Gerard Profan. I would like to thank him for this important discourse. We strongly believe that uh, through his various research articles and book, the glorious history of Japu community will become all the more known internationally. As the uh, chair of the Japu Mahaguti, uh, along with my full appreciation for this conceptual uh, idea uh, he had expressed in this Zoom program. I would like to uh, put uh, forward some of the problems uh, we are facing at the problem uh, present. From the cultural viewpoint, the present condition is tolerable and in a very satisfactory, but from the land, as well as uh, several other few points, we feel the condition of Japu community is at a critical junction, critical problem. Japus are farmers, but 70% of our lands have been filled with houses, ironically. They have been planting buildings in the paddy fields. 
the remaining 30% land is at the verge of destruction through various second ring road project, smart city, fast track construction plans, etc. Though we are uh, proud of our ancient ancestors, we have been concerned about our future generation. On the, uh, uh, on the one hand, we are struggling to save uh, and maintain our traditional values and culture. At the same time, we uh, uh, we uh, at the same time uh, before us, we have the challenge of uh, challenge of framing the Japu society uh, fit for the new age or Japu future generation. Obviously, we are facing the challenge of uh, handing over the culture, music, professional uh, customs of Japu tribe uh, to the uh, new generation. Uh, we would like uh, to more uh, than happy to hear the valuable suggestions from our uh, renowned scholars, uh, uh, Mr. Topan, in this regard. Thank you. Um, yes, please. Yeah, uh, I was just listening to you and uh, thank you so much. Uh, can I, can I uh, have a few words? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, can, surely. Uh, we, will, we, will now, uh, we will now move on to uh, um, the third and last phase where we can uh, take questions from all our guests, whoever is interested to ask questions or interact. Uh, it's almost going to be two hours since we have kept uh, Dr. Tafan here. So we'll keep it very short and uh, please keep your uh, questions, uh, make it very concise as, as much as you can. And um, uh, also we would not like to, you know, kind of keep him for too long. Uh, I've seen uh, Madan Mahindraji who's uh, raised his hand. I see a lot of books behind him. Please introduce yourself and- uh... Well, uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Madan Mahindraji. In fact, uh, it was so nice interaction program of Dr. Jiral Trophy and I, I, I really appreciate it. And at the same time, I heard quite a lot from Dr. Bal Gopal and Raj Bhai Jakhami, who is now in the States, in fact. After listening all the things, it was really uh, important issue that, uh, that has been raised here in terms of interaction. Now, I would like to say, now, in fact, I'm not a sociologist, neither I'm an anthropologist. I'm just a listener, in fact, in this, in this context. So I would like to uh, just add a few words. I believe that uh, Mr. Raj Bhai Jakhami must have added this. For example, this is Japu community, in fact, wherein the Tribune University could made um, could could manage to have established the NKT phase. It's all the Jaffa land. In fact, that's one thing. It was not mentioned anybody else. That's that's very important. In fact, if Jaffa were have uh, protested at that areas for not to build tremendous we will be somewhere else. So this is this is a lot of contribution for the country as, as a whole. Uh, I think uh, Rajve Jakami uh, 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 should have uh, uh, told these other issues. And, and at the same time, in Karhanu Valley, the importance of Jiapu, as Rajve Jakami said, is very, very crucial. You know? If I talk about on and about the Jiapu community in terms of culture, in terms of agriculture at the same time, nobody heard about it. In fact, you know, when, once I was uh, exporting some of the iceberg litis for Magnol in uh, Bombay and Delhi, that time I had an opportunity to interact with uh, you know, farmers, Japu family in Manara areas, where they used to cultivate grow 12 crops a year. I don't, nobody, could, no, nobody could imagine, in fact. I was surprised to know it. When I told my friends, some of the friends, it was really, really historical issues, you know. One after the next, one after the next, one after within a twelve within 12 months, 12 crops a day, intercropping. So that much of effort they to do. You know, it, that's only Japu family. Where do you to color, uh, produce these vegetables and all the things, 12 crops a year in the same plot? 
So it is it's really amazing and it's unforgettable. So those are the things I would like to remind and add in this one, rather than to add in sociocultural aspect and anthropological aspects. That's what I think. I think uh, time is getting short. As Sankta said, it's a very short we, we need to tell. And it's really interesting. I really have honor and, and I mean, in a sense, good opportunity to be with you on and about this interaction. And I am listening. Right, uh, we're back from uh, in the middle, in fact, not in initial stage uh, of this program. I feel really happy and I would like to thank the WNO, Sanyuta, Gerald Coffin, and everybody here uh, who, present, who presented their interaction and at the same time feeling about the Jaffa community in this side. Thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Mr. Mananda, could you please uh, let us know where you're connecting from today? Yeah. Well, this is from New Banesur, Kathmandu. In fact, I'm from Banepa. And uh, um, I, I have interacted a lot of times with uh, Jokhamiji when he was here in Kathmandu. You know, he knows my uncle. I probably my uncle's friend, Gyan Kaji Manandar. My uncle is yeah. Gyan Kaji who is there. Yeah, and that's what it is. Now I'm I'm semi-retired. In fact, uh, in a sense, I used to work intermittently in one of, in, in agriculture. My basic background is agriculture. In fact, agriculture management. So that's yeah, what it, 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 Thanks it, it, a lot. It sounds, in in some way or the other, uh, even if you said like you are. Uh, just a, just an audience for today, but you yeah. are in agriculture, and uh, it's all about agriculture here when we're talking about Japanese community. In fact, a very interesting uh, comment came in, the first com comment to come in when I first shared the poster of this event was people were asking like, okay, uh, Japu community, boom is like the field, right? In Nepal, Basa, boom would be field, and boom yeah. would be the work, the field work that they do in ag agriculture. Uh, what, what the Japu community is supposed to do, or are, are, are known to be doing. So uh, one question was like, boom jai maradung, boom jai maradung again Japu ji, The question was like, when there are no fields with the Japu people, how can they, be, they remain Japu? Because the Japu, by definition, would be the, those who do the uh, agricultural work, and when they when they are not doing any anything to do with agriculture, and they don't have their own field, uh, how uh, what is the meaning of being a Japu in, in such a situation? Uh, you know, is there all the other things that still keep them uh, as as a, uh, as you know keep their identity as a Japu, or it is is it the major major thing that they need to have a field? They need to be working in agriculture to be defined as a Japu was a question which came from audience and which was quite interesting actually. And maybe we can discuss it some other time or maybe later from whoever. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Mr. Malander from Nepal. And we will now move on to our next uh, uh, question here from Sashi Malander. Again, we have another uh, great Malander audience here. Sashi Malander Ji, as I know him, he is the uh, founder of Pasaputsubuti UK, one of the founders of Pasaputsubuti UK in London. And he's connecting here uh, today, definitely from UK. And I'm connecting you here. Uh, Mr. Maranda, please uh, put forward your question. Jojo uh, Lopa, namaste. And bonjour, Jara Tofi. What I wanted to know was uh, in the 70s or 60s, uh, Japus uh, obviously were termed derogatorily uh, their caste. Uh, and I remember that some changed their names from Maharjan or Japu to Shrestha. Now, did he come across that at any time in his field work? To what extent is it? Obviously, now, as Navin pointed out, that the derogatory term, terms that they've used in the past is a really bad one in the society where I think the Japus are the most sincere of the clans Newars are in Kathmandu. Um, and obviously, another question I have is to do with Manander. The Mananders were Sami, and they changed to Manander, probably from the same uh, derogatory uh, terminology used. Uh, and I'm, by the way, I'm Sashi. I am a son of Fagurlal. Uh, to Gerard Toffin, if he does not tagur Yes, I know. Okay, nice to meet you. And I've lived in uh, UK for the last 50 years because I came to study, 51 years I came to study, and I do believe that my father, tagur has had some uh, connections with you. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, uh, of course, of course, I'm using the dictionary of uh, tagur <laughs> very, very yeah. often. 
and uh, I know the importance of. Uh, uh, so he was Takolar was your father, no? Yeah, I'm the youngest son. You know, give that say that. Youngest son. Yeah, okay. I may have even met you back in the 60s. Yes, I yes. don't know, because I came here in the 70s in London, so I've been here all, okay. the, all those years. Okay. But I was quite interested. I, I've In the time that I was there, uh, we, you know, I probably, in a, in a, like a very friendly way, used the derogatory term jackal, because I had classmates. Uh, the, 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 the likes are those uh, of the owners of uh, Sankara Hotel, Mm. Uh, Ramesh and Binod, they were thrusters, and we said, "Oh, you're a Jaffu, you know." And this is just the way we joke. But is there anything you found in the yes. field uh, work you've done? So uh, uh, about the, the migration, the the social mobility between uh, Japus and uh, and Shwesta, the Shapus starting to to call themselves uh, uh, Shwesta, uh, that was documented uh, by this Colin Rosser. Uh, important article in the in the 60s and i didn't uh, he, he he traced the way the japu has to follow to to become a shwesta actually it, it was a long long way but it was possible it was possible and uh, but i didn't found very much in, in my in laritpur jila and Kathmandu jila I, I i didn't document very well this 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 uh, mobility, but in in Bhaktapur, in Bhaktapur, of course, I know uh, personally uh, many many so called Shwestas, mm. who most obviously uh, are, are coming from uh, a Japu origin, and uh, upgrading uh, and changing their name. Yes, yes, uh, I don't document. In, in, in Kope, uh, I found many, many, many examples of, of this. Not so, not, not frequently in, in Kathmandu or in uh, in uh, in Patan. This, uh, yeah. what, what can answer to you? <laughs> yeah, thank you. And also the Sami, which we are, the oil tillers. Uh, did we have any connection, or where at any historical time, part of the? Uh, what you call the, the tilling of the land, uh, you know, Japus, you know, hundreds of thousands of years? Uh, no, I have no document. Or I have never... You mean that Mananda were formerly tilling, uh, uh, tilling land? or? Uh... Well, yeah, that's what some people try to say, that Manandas were also at one point in history where... Uh, involved in the tilling of the land. So I don't know how. I don't know. I, I, myself, I don't know. I always, uh, I, I always know. I, I, I little uh, studied about the seven, seven sa, uh, in, in, in Kathmandu, there were seven main uh, sa. sa in Kathmandu. Uh, so I, I, I know a little about uh, uh, Sami and Manandar uh, culture in Kathmandu, but I, I never heard about uh, uh, formerly them uh, tilling land. Uh, well, perhaps I missed some points, but I, I don't know anything about this. Well, it didn't care. I, I think Thank I, you. I used to till the land till now. In fact, I have some land in the Banipa. We used to do that. So we call it the well, way. Oh, think, okay. Uh, it's, it's really common, even in Bhaktapur. A lot of men yeah. used to till the land, in fact, along with the uh, oh. Ma Mahardana and Bangal. So I don't think there is any confusion about it. You know? <laughs> we are, we, man, okay. at the same time as Dr. Giral uh, says, of course, we used to press the aisle as well, in fact, you know, that's how it comes up. That's a sa sa's are there, you know, yes. to press the, now it's uh, almost closed, now it's modernized, and yes. well, I think I believe in Kokna and Yel's word, only the, it's there, the traditional type of, you know, pressing the aisle and all. That's what the Sami or Manandar used to come right? or in early days, in fact. Times have changed, but it is a but. When you think of Jaffu till now, if you go to the road area or elsewhere, they are still tilling land and they are maintaining the culture and history. That's most important, in fact. As I said earlier, Trivon University mm. and the status of Trivon University is because of the Jaffus of Kirtipur. That's what I mentioned uh, right in the first point. That's very, very uh, good, credible issues that Jaffu had done it. In fact, and of course, they were suppressed. They couldn't say no. And they were very much loyal. They are very mild. And uh, that's how it comes. You know? 
this is how, how the job was right. That's what I said. I'm not a sociologist and anthropologist, in fact, in that, to, to analyze in terms of that way. But as you say from UK, uh, you know, Manander Yutitil then, in fact, is the... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. If this I may is, say, in Saku also, yeah, you know, have, uh, yeah, semi. That's true, that's true, that's true. They all till land. They yeah. own their lands. And, 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 and by the way, by the way, Japus also use sa in, in Tetsu. I I conducted a, a long time ago a, a study about uh, oil pressing, and uh -huh. in Tetsu there were Japus who were uh, uh, conducting and uh, processing uh, oil, oil pressing machines actually. Yeah. And, uh, so, Thank you. Even it's there, sir. Even it's there, even in Kokna areas and all those areas. Exactly. In fact, they are doing. Exactly. They are doing now. Still there. It's there. It's still being maintained. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interaction and input uh, to this discussion. And I think it is always very enriching to have as many people to uh, add their views and their knowledge. And it also it only makes us comp uh, more 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 fuller. The you know the, when we are trying to make it a more complete discussion, and uh, need ne uh, not necessarily from any sociology background, but we can always have our experiences shared. <clears throat> it only enriches our discussion. In it. We will now move on to uh, uh, Mr. Shobit Shakya, and he's joined from Estonia. Uh, I would like to request him to yeah unmute himself and please uh, put forward your question. Uh, thank you so much, Sangyukta, and uh, thank you so much, Professor Tapa, for your wonderful presentation and uh, your wonderful work, uh, which is which really means for the Newark community. And uh, thank you for my personal side as well, because you have always been so reachable, and uh, you know the co correspondence we have had with uh, between us through emails that has been really helpful for for guiding me towards my own research, which is uh, related to the uh, Newark Gutis. And uh, but today I'm I'm asking a very different question, which kind of came into my uh, my mind uh, uh, while your presentation, uh, following your presentation, and also the men, uh, the mention from Rajbai Jokomi that uh, the the tillable land, the farming land, has shrinked a lot. Uh, but then what occurred to me is that there are a lot of other communities which have now identified themselves as uh, Japu as well. Uh, for, for example, in uh, Patan, where I live, there, there are the Awale uh, community who are basically, um, you, know, you know, traditionally they do pottery and uh, do wonderful terracotta bricks as well. And then there are Benjankar, um, who I'm mad to as well. So I uh, know a bit more about <laughs> Benjankar as well. Um, uh, is this a later assimilation after uh, there was more political power within the Japu communities that these communities also identified themselves as Japu, or this was always uh, the case that these other communities as well, which has uh, who's had like very different uh, trade and skills, were actually amongst the overall Japu community. Uh, could you clarify on that? Uh, maybe uh, Rajbhai Jokomi could add to it as well after uh, Professor Tafa has uh, answered. Thank you so much. Um, if uh, if Professor uh, if uh, Dr. Tufan doesn't need to any uh, add any comment to this, we'll move forward again uh, to Mr. Bawesh Pradhan. Uh, he's connecting today with us uh, from India. Uh, he's currently also studying and working in the UK, in Edinburgh. Uh, and he's, I think, originally from India. Uh, yeah. Uh, could you please? Um, uh, hi, am I audible, uh, Sanyukta? Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Professor uh, Gerard. Uh, uh, it was very fascinating to listen to your talk. And I really, I come from an architecture and urban planning background. And for me, it is very uh, interesting to see how uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, like you know, genres have seen Kathmandu in a very different way. And I've, I have followed works of various urban planners and town planners, which uh, I think were working in the similar uh, timeline when uh, perhaps you were also there in 1960s and 70s with a German uh, team, GTZ. And I'm really fascinated to see how uh, different people have different take on the same Kathmandu Valley. Uh, where uh, the GTZ work uh, done by uh, uh, town planners from Mumbai uh, explain Kathmandu to be uh, at that point of time very haphazard, underdeveloped, and hence there would be required to make it developed. And then, you know, urban planning would come in and then 
uh, vis a vis all the uh, financial institutions uh, and and the in the the uh, the category of the nagar palika has to come in and all of those and alongside when you explained how the city and the village difference uh, is very uh, particular to the japu community like when you mentioned about the sue kue and the shiguti and the sanaguti for me it would be very interesting to learn how you know at one uh, on the one side the planners and the architects would uh, you know comment on the nepal or or the kathmandu valley to be very underdeveloped and not urban by calling the i mean by saying that so many number of people are still in the agriculture uh, uh, in in agriculture uh, at the same time how you would explain that same uh, context of the kathmandu valley to be you know very like the same community which is the japu community for being the originator or for being very specific uh you know very city dwellers instead of the village dwellers so so largely this is my question uh thank you uh, sanyukta thank you everyone yes it is a question difficult to to answer but but one thing is important to know is that uh, in the course of history it seems that uh, uh, that uh, kathmandu for instance has been made up, I don't know, in the eighth, ninth century, made up of different villages. So uh, this, uh, the origin perhaps of the historic growth of, of the cities is uh, uh, perhaps linked to the preservation uh, inside the city of old uh, uh, village nucleus. So perhaps it, it may be, it may be an answer but um, uh, the things here is little different uh, between Asia and Europe. In Europe, you, you, you find in the medieval age, you find very rare case of, uh, of uh, uh, towns who were also agricultural. The, 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 the lands were outside, uh, but uh, the farmers also were outside. And but in in, um, in Asia you have you found in Asia civilizations you have more more case like uh, uh, the, the the Newar and the Kathmandu Valley where the farmers were integrated in in, in the towns and where there is a, a, even a, a French word agroville agro agro means uh, uh, related to land and ville which means uh, town. And this concept, Agroville, designated this kind of symbi symbiosis, symbiosis of uh, 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 urban, uh, urban uh, uh, characteristic of a town and its uh, 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 farmer's component. And in the course of history in Asia, you, have, you, you found similar case. And this concept of Agroville um, remind me when you are, where you're uh, speaking about. It's difficult to, to translate agroville. Uh, 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 a, a, a city with attachment, a city with attachment inside of his city of uh, agricultural uh, aspects. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Thank you. Let, let, uh, me, uh, let me add uh, to Dr. Giral. In fact, and to the Bishwas from London, UK, uh, the question of land sinking and uh, urbanization part, in, since he's an urban planner, I think he must have seen Cambridge. I have been to Cambridge. Uh, it's quite near from London, in fact, long back. They have maintained the same you know, city. And I stayed the house of a friend which happened to be 130 years old, in fact, they used to maintain. And within the Cambridge area, core areas, they don't allow the private car. So that's how they are maintaining. But in our context in Nepal, it's shrinking, land is shrinking because we are urbanizing, you know, maybe uh, with the advice of foreigner, with the advice of donor or something, that's what it is. See, we back in, you know, when we were a child, when we were to come to Kathmandu, we to walk up to Vakhtapur and then have a you know, vehicle and come to Kathmandu in Thala. And it was so clean, so beautiful, of course, the road was small, they were culturally well attached and well affected. Now it's all changed, in fact. 
that's the that's the that's the free, free, uh, that's the main you know, purpose of land shrinking. And at the same time, I said, uh, you know, the Mr. Pradhan said, Awale, Dangul, Martin, whatever they call it, they are really the you know, very mild people, and they're really, they're, really, they're really local people. In fact, they are still maintaining the culture. And though the land structure is shrink, they are still working for the land. In fact, of course, few people have moved uh, moved uh, abroad. Uh, for example, son of you know the, our Rajbhai Jakarbi and all that for his and states, and maybe you know Bal, uh, you know, Dr. Balgopal moved to Netherlands because he's getting that opportunity. He must be from farmer, farming community as well from Sanko. This is how it happened. It, uh, that keeps on changing. As the change is more in Kathmandu Valley, you know, change is more in Kathmandu Valley as compared to the West. That's what I feel. I don't know. I don't have statistical data for that. It's more so in Kathmandu Bhaktapur line before. Of course, in Bhaktapur, it's maintaining to some extent, but not too much. That's what I would like to add. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mananda. And we are now uh, at the concluding part of today's uh, discussion. It's been a bit longer than we had planned for. We actually requested Dr. Tufan for one and a half hours maximum, and it is going to be two and a half hours now in a 10 minutes. Uh, before we conclude, I would just like to quickly uh, make a note of a small thing that I noticed this morning. So I was reading, I, I was trying to go in th uh, through uh, Dr. Tifa's works, which is so enriching and uh, will only add to your knowledge every time you read it. As many times you read, read it, it is going to add to your knowledge uh, amazingly. And there was a word where he mentioned like Bhuja and in, within bracket, it was like in Nepal, for Nepali or Nepal Vasa for boiled rice. And it, it kind of uh, quickly, uh, struck me like, okay, uh, so for, for contemporary Nepal bhasha, uh, jaki is the rice grain and when it is boiled, it becomes za and we all only call it za when we have uh, what, what we call in Khasbasa uh, Nepali bhat, the cooked rice, the boiled rice. But then, uh, interestingly, because I'm, I come from a Shrestha uh, family and uh, as you know, in, in Kathmandu, the uh, Shrestha families mostly speak in Kemba, uh, Khasbasa Nepali, to their kids and I was never taught Nepal bhasha anyway. Uh, in my childhood. So I only only heard like bhat khane, bhat khane and all that. But when I went to school, I heard for the first time from my Rana Shah friends that Buja Juna and all that. And Buja was the first time I heard from my Rana Shah friends. And uh, when I learned this morning, like from uh, Tufa's, uh, one of the papers where Buja is actually coming from Nepal, so it actually struck me like, oh, okay, yeah, Ja is the contemporary word for boiled rice, then it could be Buja as well. But the more interesting thing is like, we could. We were only uh, mostly discussing that uh, Newars from out, uh, who who actually started living outside Kathmandu Valley. Uh, they preserve many of the old forms of the Nepal Vasa words like Pazu uh, Mozu and Aza uh, Azi and all that. Because nowadays in Kathmandu we say Bazi Bazai and Mama uh, Maizu. So we were only noticing that in most of the discussions recently, but it's also interesting now to see that some of, some examples that like even the other uh, castes were who were in power in, in the valley like Ranas and Shahs, they they've also preserved some form of Nepal Basha and in in their in their daily uh, use, maybe because they got married to many of the uh, Newa uh, brides and all. So there could be many possibilities. But what I, what I wanted to highlight was even the smallest things that we read from. Dr. Tufan's paper today, the ones he had written like 40, 50 years ago, it keeps us busy for the whole day thinking like how it could have happened and how it has changed and, uh, and you can't help comparing things from today and back then. And it, it only enriches your understanding and, and brings more discussions uh, uh, to the table. Uh, so uh, if it, it was just one word, there are many, there could be many, many, many words and hundreds of things that could happen. That could happen to you when you start reading his books and papers. Uh, that was one interest, interesting incident from this morning, and I look forward to read more and more of his works. And I request the same for all of you as well. Uh, at the end of this uh, discussion, I would finally, uh, at the end, I would like to uh, request Dr. Tufa before we say goodbye to everyone. If there's anything that we missed today, and if there's any uh, anything we would like to add before we end, please. No, I would like to thank all the, the participants, so the commenters. Ah, Sayyidji, yes, ho. Ji, uh, that's a question, you know, the Prashtra Mozula, Dr. Tophana, the Taibati, Ji, Taibu, Surga, Tasa, Japodes, and Tonkin, and Toron, so some much of Paganatona, Japodepi, Christopher, Imugo, Sanskrit, Fuminapa, and someone did, 
तर ठो चाहे भूमि मर ठूँ को लो चाहे फास्ट ट्रैक यो नाम सेकेंड रिंग रोड यो नाम विभिन्न आयोजन नाम मतलब चाहे छे भूमि हीन अवस्था लो ओके ठो आ गुड मतलब विकास नाम में वै चौपटी मतलब फास्ट ट्रैक खे रिंग रोड यो खे अथवा स्मार्ट सीटी खे वैक छूट हाँ ढो तो जैपुटे ठो वैया संस्कृति को खलनाचना मगट ठो भविष्य बारे चिंता क्या माल ठो चाहन यान खा प्रश्न मजो वैक विचार निन मस हो डेफिनेटली अवश्य नजी सब हाँ सो डुफा खास मेनली Mr. Jakami just explained to me uh, in our uh, local dialect, of course, uh, you, you taught us equally uh, this uh, Nepal Basha, um, that he wanted to also hear from you if you had any comments about the kind of uh, issues that the Japa community is going through, uh, mainly because of the um, encroachment of their land, their field, where, which is their identity, which is their profession and, and everything that defines them uh, by, the, by the political upheaval, I mean, the, the interest of the state in kind of uh, degenerating them and uh, building their own, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, for instance, what uh, uh, Mr. Jacami uh, was uh, telling about the ring road. Huh? I, yeah. Actually, the, the ring road, uh, uh, I, I saw it in the in the southern part of Lalit Pojila, where, where if the ring road is constructed, it will be a disaster for uh, uh, these old Japu villages and because it will be uh, the, the 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 ring road will cross a little southern of Tetso, it will cut uh, Chapagaon uh, from Tetso. I think it will be it's not good a good idea. It will it will be a disaster not only for the Japu but for all the Katmandu Valley and the Newa culture. I think uh, it's not for me. It's not a good idea. <laughs> you have other means of uh, and. Um, and it, it will also destroy uh, the link between the Japuth and the land. Uh, this link is very important to preserve. And this is why uh, from the e e ecological and from the cultural uh, side, uh, I, I'm a little hesitating about this uh, extended ring road. I think it's a bad, bad idea for, uh, for Japus. Thank you. Mr. Chakavi. <laughs> as, as Dr. Tufan rightly highlighted, uh, if it is bad for, if it is no good for the Japu community, it is of course no good for the entire Newa community and also the entire Nepali population. It is only uh, going to do bad to the, there's nothing good you could do, it could bring to, to the culture and heritage of the country. Uh, it, it is not just the Newa heritage, but the heritage of the Nepal itself. And if it is destroying that, then how good it could be is, is a, a very clear question, I think. Yes. Uh, there should be more discussion about it. I think uh, maybe we could discuss more about that particular topic as well in our future discussions. Uh, like, like the way all the Newas wear the Japulan, the Hakupatasi, to identify themselves as Newars, I fully support that. Uh, the entire Newa community should also be concerned about the issues of the Japus and not just yes. borrowing their culture and mu uh, music and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, kind of getting them um, into uh, the art and uh, craft and music and everything that is the core of our culture. I think it should be an issue for all yes. the Newa community and we should discuss more of this in, in the future, definitely. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Jokomi, for bringing this to the surface. And uh, if there's anything that you'd like to say, Dr. Tufa, before we end today? Uh, uh, no, I, I would like to, to, to thank all the commentators and uh, you also, Sanyukta, for organizing this, uh, this, uh, this talk. It was very well organized, and uh, I found it very interesting to have interaction with different persons, even from, also from, uh, from the young students and also from the Japu Mahaguti also. It was very, the future. The future of a Japu community. Well, they have uh, Japu Samas has constructed a wonderful museum uh, uh, in Patan with a lot of uh, uh, cultural items of uh, Newars, but well, the 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 so survival of uh, of Japu culture in the in the modern world also is a, it's a very important question actually to 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 think about it and. Uh, um, and uh, well, thank you um, everybody. And I was very glad to participate to this, um, to this interaction. And um, uh, I think uh, th there must be some way to, to, to maintain uh, the Japu, Japu and uh, Newa culture with the modernity. I hope so. There is a path 
between uh, these two constraints, actually. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Tufan. I hope it is not too late. We have just kept oh, it no, no, two no, and a no, half no. hours now, and we really enjoyed, but uh, we also apologize for the time it has taken uh, for the enjoyment that we are uh, <laughs> calling it. Um, so thank you very much. And thank you also to Shobit Sakya from Estonia, Babish Pradhan from India, and also Sambhavi Ganesh from India, three of them who actually helped uh, to organize this today and uh, as, as co-hosts of this uh, today's event. Thank you very much from World New Organization, myself, Sumitra Shrestha. Thank you very much. And we'll see you again in the future. Please join us in the future discussion as well. Thank you very much. I will end the discussion here now. I'll end the meeting here. Thank you. Okay, thank Bye. you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Namaste. Namaste. Yeah. Namaste. Thank you.